I'm Amy Peck, Houston City Council member for District A. Fantastic, thank you. So normally we hop right into some policy questions, but I was hoping that we could start this chat by talking about what it's like to be a council member in a major city in Texas. So could you just walk me through you know, a day in the life of a Houston City Council member? Absolutely, so every day as a city council member is very different. Um, Tuesday afternoons, we have public session where we get to listen to the public who wants to come and address council, the council body. And then Wednesday mornings are council meetings where we um, actually take the votes. And then throughout the week, we have committee meetings, meetings with constituents, um, civic club meetings, um, lots and lots of meetings, but I love it, um, getting to talk to my constituents and fighting on their behalf every single day. Something I feel like a lot of people don't realize is that the work doesn't end just when you leave the council room. You know, you're meeting with constituents every single day. You're meeting with other council members to discuss what you're doing. There's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes that people never really see happen. Yes, there's a lot of work behind the scenes. Um, every day leading up to a council meeting, there's lots of meetings behind the scenes just to you know, ask questions about things that are on the agenda, that kind of thing. And then in between all of that, I'm still meeting with constituents, hearing from them about their concerns, their issues, um, and then having more meetings with other people to discuss those issues and try to get them resolved. So yeah, there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes and we try to tell people what we're working on through social media and newsletters and stuff like that. But there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes that people don't necessarily see every single day. On a related note, why was it that you chose to run for Houston City Council? Is this something that you had seen yourself doing early on when you were in college or was it something you more fell into? Um, it's actually something that I've wanted to do for a very long time. Um, local government is always what I've truly loved. And so this is the only thing that I've ever run for was District A, City Council, um, because I love local government. I love getting to help people. I love getting to fight for my community every single day. And so it was just something that I've always really um, thought was so interesting. I know potholes and infrastructure and flooding isn't interesting for everyone, but I love those issues and trying to tackle them for my community. Our kind of people. So related to that, tell me a little bit about this bond package that recently passed and about your contribution to it. So the bond package um, went to council for a vote recently and there was nothing for district A on the bond list. And so I um, had an amendment to add $10 million for one of our parks, Agnes Moffitt Park, because it is in serious need of revitalization. Um, it's a 40 acre park and there's a playground and a pool, um, but not much else at that park. There's a lot that we could do um, at this park for our community. But there's no funding ever attached to that master plan. So because it, we were going out for a bond anyway, and this bond doesn't raise taxes in any way, I felt comfortable with making that ask for our community. So it um, passed, luckily my colleagues supported it and it passed and is now on the bond list. And of course the bond has to pass um, from the voters in November, but I was excited to get something for district day on that bond list. So Houston is very large. Um, oh, I should have mentioned at the very start that I am also a, a University of Houston graduate. Okay. I believe you did your master's there, so go kooks. But um, <laughs> what does, District A specifically, what are the challenges facing District A and what are the sorts of things that you set out to do in city council for your specific district? So District A is Northwest Houston, um, Spring Branch, Inwood, Willowbrook Mall area. And the challenges that we have in District A, um, first and foremost, is flooding. Um, that is a serious issue. I mean, a lot of parts of Houston have flooding issues too, but specifically in District A, we have a lot of neighborhoods that just, they need projects in order to resolve the flooding issues. And so the big thing that I set out to do when I ran for office is to fight for flooding mitigation projects for my district and have been working on that. We've been successful for several um, projects to move forward and we're working on the rest. 
Um, but that is a huge goal of mine is to make sure that our neighborhoods are protected from flooding. Um, and this is flooding in just regular everyday rain events, not a Hurricane Harvey event necessarily, but just regular rain events, people are flooding. And so we have to get those flooding mitigation projects moving forward. And um, the other big concern in District A is crime. And so that is a big focus of mine as well, is to make sure our police officers have the technology that they need to do their jobs and to make sure that we have our officers patrolling our neighborhoods and working with the community to solve crime. So Houston is incredibly diverse. There's, um, but even being diverse, there's very distinguishable pockets across the different districts, I believe. Can you tell me a little bit about what it's like working uh, with, you know, city council when the different interests are so varied? Yeah, the different interests are varied, um, not even just all over Houston, but even in District A alone, there's, you know, different areas of my district are, are very um, diverse and different from one another. And so, um, yeah, it's very interesting to see the needs um, across each council district. And in District A specifically, um, you know, we have um, so many different needs, um, diverse when it comes to population. Our district is primarily Hispanic. We also have a very big Korean population in District A um, and a lot of Korean businesses and restaurants. So that's really fun to go to the Korean restaurants and we have the Korean Community Center in District A. And so just the, the needs and the people in District A are just so different. And that's one of the things that I love about our district. I imagine it presents really unique challenges that you might not have expected when you first went in, because uh, I imagine you discover a lot about your community when you're the person that everyone needs to come to. Yeah, absolutely. So my um, experience is a little bit unique from other people because I was the chief of staff for the previous council member before I took this job. And so I have been working in District A and for District A for many years now, but it is really different to go from behind the scenes to in front of the scenes. And so there were definitely a lot of things that I learned, um, you know, just being in front of, <laughs> of the scenes. And of course, with COVID and the pandemic, things are just so different now from before. And so there's definitely um, a lot to take in for sure. So we like to ask three questions to everybody that we interview, three of the same questions each time. These are just the first thing that comes to your mind. No prepared, we don't need any prepared responses or you know, <laughs> particularly eloquent thoughts here, but just what you think are your most genuine reactions. So the first question is, what do you think is the biggest challenge facing the state of Texas at this moment? Um, the biggest challenge for the state of Texas, I think, is to, I, I mean, there, there are a lot, but the first one that came to mind um, is, you know, we have so many people moving to Texas every single day um, and businesses that are relocating here. And I think that that's a great thing. And I encourage that. But at some point, you know, there's, um, you know, we have to keep um, getting more people here and keep getting businesses. And so I wonder if that starts tapering off, you know, what that's going to do to the economy. And so it's just a matter of how do we continue to want people to come here? And I guess that's a challenge for the city of Houston as well um, to make sure that more people are, are coming here and wanting to stay here once they're here. That's a great response because it's a, uh... It, it brings out how multifaceted that issue is. You know, not only do we need to plan for the future and see how do we keep this momentum moving, but there's also an element of planning for the present. You know, we have more and more Absolutely. people coming and, you know, Dallas, Austin, San Antonio are struggling with affordable housing and finding rental options for people that were already living in Texas. So it just points out there's a lot of different issue, ways or a lot of different elements of this issue that need to be faced. Absolutely. So then, our next question is uh, zooming out a little bit broader. Um, what do you think is the biggest challenge for our country, for the United States right now? <laughs> oh my gosh, there's so many. <laughs> um, I guess the first one that came to mind is um, just finding a way in Congress to move issues forward in a way that's not so partisan all the time. Um, which, I mean, sometimes it has to be, and I get that, and there are issues that, 
you know, people feel very differently, but, but there's so many things that both sides agree on and it, everybody just needs to come together to just move the country forward on those items that everyone agrees on. And even those items lately have become so um, contentious. And I think that we just need to find ways to work together and move some of those things forward. That's part of why we started doing Rising Lone Stars was um, during the previous administration, we felt like there was a lot of, like the news was constantly filled with very partisan issues and uh, the polarization was getting to be a, a new height. And so we wanted to start Rising Lone Stars because we thought highlighting local elected officials where uh, partisanship doesn't play into the politics so much, it's not much of an element, would be a valuable way to remind people that this isn't the way our politics has to be. Absolutely. I mean, in Houston, for the most part, on most issues, we find ways to work together. You know, there's amendments sometimes, sometimes we don't always agree, but for the most part, we're working together and finding ways to move forward, even when we don't necessarily agree on the items. And I really think that that's the best way to just move our city forward and move our country forward. For sure. And our very last question is, if you could talk to the Texas legislature and tell them one thing, either a piece of advice or something to focus on in the state, what would you tell them? Um, that's a very good question. Um, just trying to stay Houston focused on, um, you know, what's happening at the legislature. I always try to follow anything that ha that pertains to the city of Houston, because of course that's where, you know, I'm elected and that's where my focus is. And so I would say, um, to the legislature to really, um, listen to local officials when it comes to something that's making, um, any kind of significant change at a local level. Um, to just hear us out and, you know, listen to how that's going to affect people locally.